Today is going to be a lot of fun. I always love it when engine builders allow me to come and hang out when they're testing a lot of components. And Keith Newcomer of Newcomer Racing, you may remember him from our previous video of the Jeep engine build that's done really well. He's invited me to come along. He's testing a bunch of different components. We get to check it all out. But the one I'm most interested in is the age-old question. Do modern, high-end, full-roller rockers make power versus stock stamp steel rockers? Hang on. We're going to find out. When engine builder Keith Newcomer invited me to tag along on a day of dyno testing, I of course came with cameras in hand. Newcomer specializes in Jeep and AMC straight six engines. And if you haven't seen his low buck Jeep stroker build, it shouldn't be missed. I'll have a link for it in the video description below. This particular engine is a test mule Newcomer put together for R&D on a new engine package. This one is a project to find the most power using the more modern TUPY head, commonly referred to as Tuppy, and Jeep used it from 2000 and up. Although it is more modern, this head can actually be difficult to make power with because the exhaust port has been shrunk. Here's a standard exhaust port, and now compare it to a Tuppy exhaust port. See how much smaller it is? And remember, this has already been ported about as large as you can go. So Newcomer is testing a new fully ported Tuppy head to see what combination works best. The head is bolted to a stroker combo using a 4.0 block and its 3.875 inch bore with a 4.2 crank that has a 3.895 inch stroke. That combines to make this straight six 275.6 cubic inches. There are a couple of ways to make a Jeep stroker. This one uses the shorter rods from the 4.2 liter engine and cast hyperutectic pistons for a 4.0. That makes the rod stroke ratio lower than when using the longer 4.0 connecting rods, which doesn't really help power. But it is a common combo, so we need to account for it. Remember, this dyno test isn't about making a single big power number, so if the engine is a little bit down on power, it doesn't matter. This is about comparing how different components affect power versus one another. And by the way, the cam is a hydraulic flat tappet with 226 and 232 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths tappet lift on a 110 degree lobe centerline. Valve lift is approximately 527 thousandths of an inch for both the intakes and the exhausts. So we got started making dyno pulls and swapping out parts. Newcomer's testing plan was mostly centered around the intake and exhaust. He started with two aftermarket aluminum intakes one as cast and one port match to the cylinder head. We tested them back to back and unfortunately didn't see much change. He also had four different exhaust headers to test. We started big and went progressively smaller. The first was a large inch and seven eight stainless header that newcomer fabricated himself for an upcoming turbo build. He knew it was probably too large for this application but it was fun to test nonetheless. The second was a smaller eBay header with an inch and a half primaries that had been modified to feed the six primaries into two pipes and then into a single three inch merge collector. The third had larger inch and five eighths primaries and fed all six into a single two and a half inch merge collector. You'll notice that we don't have the dyno exhaust hooked up for these pulls. The flat flange at the end of some of these headers didn't allow the dyno exhaust to be hooked up, so we just ran them all open. And finally, we tested the stock exhaust headers from 91 through 99 Jeeps. This has an odd primary and collector configuration with one and a half inch pipes. On the stock engine, this setup was rated at 190 horsepower. But no matter what we tried, nothing really changed. Every pull was between 311 to 316 horsepower with a peak torque between 335 to 340 pound-feet. And it was becoming very evident that short of throwing on a turbo, the small exhaust port on the Tuppy head simply wasn't going to allow any more power. But before calling it a day, we did have one more test we wanted to try. Newcomer brought the test mule engine with a set of Harlan Sharp full roller aluminum rockers installed they are in the stock 1.6 to 1 ratio, and that's because he knew that's the most efficient setup. 
but we wonder just how much power they helped move to the crankshaft versus a set of stock stamp steel rockers. So we also had a set of those on hand to swap on along with a set of correct length push rods. So here's the dyno pull with the Harlan Sharp roller rockers and the stock exhaust headers bolted up. We got peaks of 340.4 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM and 316.7 horsepower at 5,600 RPM. We ran the pull from 3,500 up to 5,700 RPM and the average was 326.3 pound-feet of torque and 284.6 horsepower. Not bad. Then we swapped out the Harlan Sharps for a set of stock stamped steel rockers. These are also 1.6 to 1 ratio, keeping everything even. Here, you can see the difference in the two styles. One particular issue with stamped rockers is they aren't as rigid as quality aftermarket lifters. So with heavier springs, they can have a tendency to flex, causing a change in the true rocker ratio. However, we're using relatively light springs with approximately 80 pounds on the seat and 240 over the nose, so that shouldn't be a big issue. What we wanted to take a look at is the efficiency of the lifter design. The full roller Harlan Sharps not only have a roller tip where they contact the top of the valve stem, but maybe more importantly, the rocker trunnion or pivot has a roller bearing for minimal drag. The stamped steel rockers lack this feature. Instead, there's a steel puck for the trunnion and the system depends on oil to keep friction down. So once we got the stock rockers on, we got the oil tips warmed up and made a couple more pulls. We didn't expect the stock style stamped rockers to produce the same power as the full roller rockers, but honestly, I was shocked by just how much power they cost us. This time, we saw peaks of 331.1 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM and 304.2 horsepower at 5,600. That's a loss of 9.3 and 12 and a half, respectively. We lost power from the very beginning of the pull. Averages across the pull were down 13.3 pound-feet of torque and 9.2 horsepower. That's pretty significant considering this is just a 300 horsepower motor and it will only get worse on higher horsepower or higher revving engines. That horsepower loss is all basically from the high friction, steel on steel trunnion setup in the stamped rockers. Heck, this is a straight six that only has 12 rocker arms. The results would be even worse on any V8 with an additional four rocker arms. So even though we didn't see much with the earlier dyno tests, I think the rocker test is easily the most eye-opening because what we learned will work on any cam and block engine that uses rocker arms like these. At first glance, the difference in cost can seem pretty steep. Typically, the Harlan Sharp rockers are 300 bucks or so more than a set of stamped steel rockers. But when you consider the gains that can be made, plus the fact that a full roller rocker arm creates less heat and is easier on the overall valve train, this starts looking like money well invested. I hope this information was useful to you. If you've enjoyed this video, we've got lots more dyno tests on all different types of engines planned for the future. So please like and subscribe so you won't miss out. Hey, thanks for watching.